Sure. I, I wanted to ask, if you don't mind, two questions. One is about on this mission to the Central African Republic, with Chad having pulled its forces out after the, the allegations by Navi Pillay's office, what, what, how much more difficult does that make that make it in terms of fully deploying? And I know on your trip you stopped in Burundi as well. So I, I, wanted, I, I wanted to ask you about, there, there's a cable that says that weapons are being distributed by the CNDD party to its youth wing. And I, it was briefed on in the council on April 8th. And I just wanted to know what you think the council should do about a cable like that 20 years after what happened in Rwanda. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Matt. First, um, on the Chadian departure, uh, I think, uh, as my colleague from Chad uh, testified just now in the council, it has proven very challenging for the Chadian forces uh, to operate in the Central African Republic, uh, in part because uh, Muslims uh, for a long time have been branded Chadians uh, by citizens of the Central African Republic. Uh, I think the Chadians offered uh, significant solace to Muslims uh, in the Central African Republic. And so uh, notwithstanding some of the incidents that occurred that of course uh, caused great concern, um, there is a loss uh, in seeing these uh, troops depart. And I think particularly what I heard from the uh, African Union commander is that there is, it, it causes concern among the Muslim po population in the North, the displaced persons um, who worry, you know, who will protect us now. now the African Union and the French have made adjustments uh, with the departure of the Chadians uh, in the last few days. Uh, the Cameroonians and the French have stepped in to try to uh, fill the gap, uh, but it does only underscore the urgent, the critical urgency of going forth uh, right now, uh, as we have been for, for uh, months, of course, but with, with heightened urgency uh, to get more African troops to come in in the period between now and September 15th, uh, when the African mission will be rehatted as a as a UN mission, um, the, you know the just as a as a matter of statistics, the number of forces uh, in the Central African Republic at a time when the security situation is still extremely grave has just diminished, and so we need to get those troop numbers up to where they were before the Chadian departure, and then we need to find. Uh, new uh, force commitments, and that's cer certainly something the United States is going to dedicate itself to uh, at the highest levels. Uh, on Burundi, um, I have seen reports along the lines that you have described um, and certainly have been in close touch with our UN colleagues. One reason that I uh, paid the visit uh, to Burundi, the first member uh, of the cabinet from the United States who's ever visited the country of Burundi, uh, was some of the alarming signs that we're seeing from the decision to uh, end uh, the UN mission um, at a time when there's significant political volatility uh, to the um, very swift trials of 21 members, uh, young people who were members of uh, one of the leading opposition parties, to restrictive media laws, to moves to change the constitution. Uh, there are a whole series of uh, um, worrying developments there. And of course the report uh, from the United Nations um, uh, only compounds our worry. Because if you uh, take a political uh, crisis on the one hand and combine it with armaments on the other, uh, that is, uh, those are precisely the ingredients for the kind of violence that Burundi has managed to avoid now for, for uh, a good few years. And it would be terribly tragic after all the progress that Burundi has made um, if it slipped into a large-scale political crisis, and certainly, of course, if it descended into violence. And so that was very much my message to the president of the country and others.